Some of you have been waiting for this video. Well, it is finally time. Hi everyone, it's Nick from T-Vape, and today we are going to discuss a long-awaited comparison between two of the most highly regarded conduction vaporizers in today's market. These things are so highly regarded, they are basically royalty, and the good kind of royalty too. While explaining these vaporizer features, I will also be name dropping some other vaporizers in order to give you relative context. If any other units catch your attention or you simply want to see our ranking page, just Google Best Dry Herb Vaporizers T-Vape and we'll come right up. This will take you straight to our ranking page, which is full of information on all of the top vaporizers. We also have individual reviews for both of these devices, so just search PAX Plus or Arc GT3 in your Google search window and you'll also find those reviews. Before I start comparing these devices against each other, just keep in mind that although they are both dry herb vaporizers, they do have different prices and features. So if you do want to check out the individual reviews of these devices, I'm going to link them in the top corner for you. Before I start the regular review, I want to mention an important background point that explains how these vaporizers were made. Both of these devices are third generation vaporizers. While they can be used directly with dry herbs, they were also made to be used with herb pods. If you're not familiar with the term third generation vaporizer, it means that they can be used with dry herb pods on the go. It's important to mention that it's not an easy business model to conquer. It's the Mount Everest of vaporizers. It's interesting to see how each company is trying to bring Nespresso style dry herb pods to the industry. Stanford engineers created the PAX design, while German engineers designed the Zeus Arc GT3. PAX's system will be more expensive over time, while the Zeus Arc GT3 will be more expensive up front, where you have to buy all of the tools necessary to make unlimited pods. You can really see the difference in the details, but no matter which one you pick, you are getting a really cool, tried, proven system. Speaking of which, PAX is trying to make their compressed dry herb pucks locally available, which is a nightmare of a mission considering the regulatory framework that's in the US, Canada, and Europe. Zeus just opted for the difficult undertaking to engineer tools that allow people to make pods themselves. It's kind of the way you you would think that Germans would solve any problem. Zeus's hands-on approach requires more thought in the engineering of the tools that enable you to make the pods yourself. The extruder packs 0.3 grams of herb into an arc pod, along with the hub that allows you to organize all of the different tools and the pods in an easy packing station. Just keep in mind that PAX pucks can only be purchased in certain areas of the US, while the GT3 makes you completely independent in your pod creating. The GT3 electric version also features an e-module, which attaches to the top of the extruder, which automatically grinds your herb and packs the pods. This automatic grinding and filling system is not found on any other vaporizer. Now, let's put this into a single thought. And by that I mean another half a page of fucking. The PAX Plus is a more straightforward solution to the core problem of vaporizing dry herb. It doesn't need anything extra. The ARC in contrast focuses on being a full all-in-one solution to those who want to use ARC pods for convenience. Overall, I think both systems are excellent and can cater to different users based on their preferences. If you live in an area that sells PAX Pucks, then that's a very convenient option for you and the PAX Plus is a great deal. On the other hand, if you don't want to be tied to having to buy fresh pods from the store, then the customization of the Arc GT3 of filling your own pods really does give it a lot more versatility. Keep in mind that you can make concentrate or CBD sandwiches in the Arc GT3. I actually made a Monte Cristo in one completely wrecked it. T-Vape's taking it off my next check. Please note that the metal arc pods protect the heating chamber from all depreciation and herb residue, while with the packs, you will have to clean the heating chamber. First and foremost, I want to discuss the vapor quality of these units, since that's what most vapor enthusiasts are interested in. Which makes sense, since they're called vaporizers. You're going to want to know how good the vapor is. When you buy a phone, for instance, you want to make sure that it's a good phone. Actually, I don't think I've made a phone call in six years. 
we really need to start calling these things something different. In general, both of these devices are at the top end of vapor quality, but you can expect some differences. Starting with the PAX Plus, this portable vaporizer uses conduction heating effectively since its heating chamber is heated from the bottom. This design means that the vapor has space to cool down as it has to travel through the whole vaporizer before reaching your lips, which is a nice feature. Also, it shows you how much the vapor cares. It's willing to travel all that distance just for a chance to caress your sweet supple lips. Don't take it for granted. Another key point is that the PAX has replaced its bottom lid. It's now made of zirconia instead of plastic. This change is helpful because it limits the amount of plastic that's close to the heat, which prevents bad smells or tastes from entering your vapor. Which is a great idea, but the PAX Plus does have silicone in the mouthpiece, which comes in direct contact with your lips. So this might be a bit of a turnoff for some silicone sensitive users. Also, it's very important to mention that depending on what PAX Plus kit you get, you might also be able to vaporize wax, thanks to the wax insert that comes with the PAX Plus complete kit. In general, I've noticed wax users slowly pushing towards lower temperatures to capture as much flavor as possible. So this might've been a factor with the PAX design and their temperature settings that they included. Now, let's look at the Zeus Arc GT3. Like most dry herb vaporizers, it uses conduction, but it has a top-loaded design. The GT3 focused more on delivering great flavor, and this is possible due to its gold sink technology. It basically uses gold in the vapor path to extract the heat from the vapor and pass it on to the body of the device. Yes, the GT3 uses gold in its chamber too, which not only helps heat the vapor evenly, but also maximizes the purity of the vapor. There is a reason that implants are made of gold. It does not oxidize or have a flavor. Another noteworthy detail of the GT3 is that its airflow has been improved by 20% since its last iteration, the GTS. This means that you're going to get a much better pull from your unit than you would have before. It's also a mildly better pull than you will get from the PAX or the PAX Mini for that matter. Both devices are intended for mouth to lung hits, which we all have enjoyed from our pre-rolls. Additionally, the GT3 is fully isolated from all plastics and silicone. Even the mouthpiece has an over-molded piece that covers the silicone so it doesn't come directly in contact with your lips. For those of you who are extra meticulous about your vapor quality, the Arc GT3 is also compatible with the Iceborne, which is also part of the Zeus arsenal. The Iceborne attachment filters your vapor through ice instead of water for even cooler, more potent hits. If you want to hydrate it as well, the Arc Bubbler Adapter will enable that too. With the PAX, you will not have any upgrade optionality. It's what you see is what you get, like the iPhone 16. No, I mean it. What you saw is what you got. You already got it. It's called the iPhone 15. The Zeus Arc GT3 provides similar vapor quality to the PAX Plus with slightly better flavor due to the materials used and the optionality to upgrade if you ever want to upgrade your vapor. However, the PAX Plus does hold up well considering its more budget-friendly nature. Both units can be outclassed by a larger convection unit like the Utilion 723 due to the fact that it has a lot more airflow than either of these two units do. What I mean by this is that if you pick either of these two units, it's mainly because of its convenience factor and depending on what your budget is. All right, now that we know what each vaporizer is focused on regarding vapor quality, let's talk about the different temperature options these devices offer. But before we start, it's good to note that with dry herb vaporizers, one generally steps up the temperature ladder in order to fully extract all of the dry herb. Still, some prefer to stick to a single, usually lower temperature in hopes of capturing as much flavor as they can from the dry herb and are okay with throwing it out before it's fully extracted. Starting with the PAX Plus, I will put the temperatures on the screen for you. As you can see, the PAX Plus has four different settings, each catering to a different need. The first two settings are best at producing flavorful vapor, while the last two settings are better at producing dense vapor that's less flavorful. Four settings for me is the sweet spot. It's not too many settings so that they become irrelevant, and it's enough to customize your session. 
What do you think? Do you guys think that four settings is enough or do you like more? Let me know in the comments below. Having said this, the max temperature on these devices is pretty low compared to other portable vaporizers. The Tronian Militron, a budget vaporizer for instance, can ramp up to 460 degrees Fahrenheit using a convection conduction heating system. Although I kind of dig the fact that PAX went with lower temperatures. It shows that they were giving some thought to the fact that they didn't want the unit to overheat which it can do in back-to-back -back sessions. Another cool fact about the PAX is that it can heat up very fast, unlike the Arc GT3, which takes about 80 seconds to fully heat up. This further adds to my point that the PAX is built more for people who want quick in and out sessions as opposed to chilled laid back sessions. It's the vaporizer for no nonsense, get things done type people. They don't have time to sit around and chill out and vape. They got things to do which kind of makes you think, why are they even vaping in the first place? Just vape later when you have time. The RGT3 comes with three temperature settings, which is more than enough to customize your sessions, but is on the lower end of what's out there. The difference, however, is that the RGT3 has a higher temperature range. The temperature settings are designed to create tasty, thick vapor and have not changed through the many updates of the Zeus Arc vaporizers. The lowest temperature is best for the first few hits, while the mid temperature is great for most of your session. And the highest temperature is obviously the best at the end to vape vaporize all the last remaining herb. Just like what John Wick does to the Russian mob after they kill one of his pets. To put this into perspective, the PAX Plus has an additional temperature setting, but overall lower temperature range. This feature is beneficial for those who prefer more precise temperature control at lower temperatures. In contrast, the Arc GT3 provides higher temperature profiles, but only in three settings. So it's more designed for people who want to turn up the heat really high to fully extract the herb. Additionally, if you want to adjust the temperature profiles even more on the Arc GT3, T3, Zeus offers a firmware manager that allows you to customize the heating for a lower flavor chasing setting or for a higher vapor production profile. The Arc GT3 takes more effort than the PAX right out of the box, but it does have more options and higher profiles to choose from. If you prefer a well calibrated plain vanilla setup right out of the box and don't want to deal with software updates, then the PAX is a great option for you. If you want to have the option to change your temperature settings in the future, the Arc is more customizable. Moving on to a more objective section, I want to discuss the build quality of these units. How are they built and what materials were used? Kicking it off with the PAX Plus, it is no surprise that it is very sturdy. PAX is known for making well-engineered devices that usually range from the mid to premium tier. Made mostly of stainless steel and aluminum, you will really feel the quality when you're holding it. It's like holding a gun. Or if that's too violent of an image for you, it's like holding a very well-made, real-feeling fake gun. I can't even... <laughs> it kind of like looks like a clip, right? If you were to open a PAX and look inside of it, it's one of the most efficient uses of space next to a smartphone. This does come with a slight catch. The unit can start to feel hot after a few minutes of use due to the drawback of the bottom chamber design. However, that is quite normal with units that have this compact of a design to get that warm. It's perfectly safe. On the choice of materials, however, the heating chamber cover is partially made of plastic, which is close to the air intake. This is not ideal, but it is a trade-off to get the compact design that the PAX rocks. The vapor path of the PAX is a stainless steel tube that ends in a silicone mouthpiece. While stainless steel is great, the silicone at the end is not the best material, like say zirconia or glass would be, but it's still very functional. On the other hand, we have the Zeus Arc GT3, which is similar in size and made of stainless steel and aluminum. As we covered before, the Arc also uses a bunch of heat-resistant gold plating in its construction to give it quality appeal. The extra that the Arc GT3 has accomplished is that it also comes with a magnetic gold tool that fits into the compact design and even covers the charging port, making the device completely seamless. Unless you've seen an Arc vaporizer, you will have trouble understanding what it is. It's similar to a gadget that Batman might carry around. You know, when he's out of batarangs, he just pulls out one of these and asks the criminals if they like to party. And then when they look all confused, he just really tunes them up. Batman doesn't vape. 
It makes him too paranoid about his dead parents. Aside from that, the vapor of the Ark travels through gold and zirconia and is completely sectioned off from the silicone, which gives it the slight edge when it comes to the clever application of materials. On that note, when it comes to the look and feel of these devices, the PAX is beautiful and very popular with the ladies, just like myself, due to its round edges and vibrant colors, like my shirt, and its Apple iPhone style design. The GT3, in contrast, has only ever come in the one color, a black matte fingerprint scratch resistant finish. As I said, the unit looks like something that Batman would wear on his utility belt with a slightly more premium gold Porsche design. Basically just pick whichever unit suits your personality more. As far as portability goes, there are two very important factors to consider. The first is how compact the actual unit is, and the second is how easy it is to use on the go, which is what a lot of people are looking for when they purchase portable vaporizers. On the first note, both of these units are quite similar. They're small enough to fit entirely in your hand. And if it's too big to fit in your hand, then put your dad's vaporizer away and do your homework. The PAX Plus is slightly longer than the GT3, but also marginally slimmer. Now let's address portability in terms of daily use. As stated earlier, the Arc GT3 has a significant advantage because of the Arc pods. PAX Plus also has pods that are marketed as infused used PAX pucks, but they are only available at select stores in legal states in the US. Just take note that having pre-filled pods or pucks make the experience of vaporizing amazingly convenient. These units are pretty much the same in terms of discreteness due to their similar form factors. I can't really say which one is more discreet. You could try using one at your kid's next recital and see which one people notice. What I can say though is that the PAX Plus can technically provide a quicker session due to its 30 second heat up timer, which is significantly better than the Arc GT3's 80 second heat up timer. Having said that though, when using the Arc Pods, you will save a significant amount of time when reloading the chamber with dry herb. The heating chamber of the packs is close to the outside, so it will create slightly more odor than the internal chamber that's on the GT3. To summarize, I think the GT3 is slightly better for those who want a nice convenient unit with pods wherever they are. On the other hand, the PAX Plus is more affordable and faster at getting the entire bowl extracted. Its compatibility with concentrates also makes it a good option for portability. All right, so we got the general idea of how portable these units are. Now we have to talk about the battery, which also will influence its portability and usage. The PAX Plus says that it can last up to 10 sessions, which depending on your usage patterns will be about two and a half hours. In my rigorous testing, I know I have a great job, I managed to get about one and a half hours, which is still pretty impressive. And the PAX comes with a 3500 mAh battery. The Zeus Arc GT3 is also impressive and comes with a 3500 mAh battery. It lasted about the same amount of time as the PAX Plus did. Where these units seem to differ is in the charging mechanism. The PAX Plus comes with a magnetic proprietary charger, which you will have to carry around to get more charges. It feels pretty cool and is unique. The GT3, on the other hand, comes with a USB-C charger, which is not cool, but it's more convenient. And a fun fact, Craig, our cameraman, is neither of those things. He is an inconvenient loser. I'm just kidding. I love Craig. We love each other. He's shaking his head right now. We generally preach the benefits of USB-C as it's been implemented in the Arc GT3, whereas with the PAX Plus, you will save a little more space since they didn't have to put a USB port in the device. Pick whichever one suits you. Now let's wrap this comparison up. Both portable vaporizers are very good at what they do. They both have their own strengths and I think that they would be a great addition to anybody's arsenal. The PAX Plus is great for anybody who wants compatibility with dry herbs and wax. Remember, you can also pick up a starter kit that does not include the concentrate insert, which means the device will only be compatible with dry herbs, but it's slightly more affordable. The Zeus Arc GT GT3 also has the more expensive GT3 electric system, but it will be a superior device for people who want to use their device on the go 
or want to do all sorts of mixing and matching with CBD and concentrates. At the end of the day, both of these devices will provide you with wonderfully delightful vapor. And I believe that the Arc GT3 comes with a hassle-free return policy if you don't like it. Pick whichever device speaks to you and don't look back. Just like my dad did with his other family. I really wish he picked me up from Little League first. If you want to see more comparisons or just want to see more options, you can always check out our ranking page by Googling Best Dry Herb Vaporizers T-Vape. Feel free to comment your experience with these devices below. It's always great for people in the community to share their ideas and for anybody who's unsure about these devices, your feedback can really help. On that note, if you want to see more of our uncensored content, because of the nature of what we talk about, we have to use code words, you can go and check out the videos that we post on our website or on X. Just sign up for our email list at the bottom of the website and we will send you notification and deals when we release new videos. On our website and X, we can talk a little more freely without worrying about the platform bringing the hammer down on us. Well, that's all for the review today. I hope you liked it. If you did, give the video a like and uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet done so. My name is Nick from T-Vape and as always, keep vaping.